I'm John Messina. Welcome to A Culinary Tour and More. Today, I'm gonna make one of my all-time favorites. It's a bone-in gorgonzola crusted pork chop that'll rock your palate. I'm also gonna make some fried yuca and baby bok choy to go along with it. I'm gonna sweeten it up on the end with a cranberry biscotti. I'm gonna get you all dialed in. But before we cook, let's have a look at one of America's most beautiful kitchens. We're here in Bartlett, Illinois, just about 35 miles northwest of the Windy City. In this beautiful, soft, contemporary kitchen designed by Residential Kitchen Design. Now I say soft because of the warmth of the kitchen. The amber stain on maple and the soft radius of the door separate it from a hardline contemporary. One of the first things you notice when you walk into this kitchen is the size and shape of the island. It's not only great for food preparation, but works real well for serving as well. The raised glass shelf is perfect for condiments and spices. And the microwave is tucked away neatly below the countertop. The counter surface is blue eyes quartzite. Now quartzite is a type of stone, a natural stone, with similar properties as granite. The name blue eyes comes from the iridescent blue flakes in the stone and work real well with the pendant lights above. Every homeowner dreams of having a big window behind the sink to look out into the backyard. And this kitchen sure has that. However, it created some design challenges, not leaving enough space for rubber cabinets. So the designer used angle front cabinets to maximize the storage and to funnel your view into the backyard. Now that left one other little challenge. This cabinet looked awfully lonesome here by itself. So a bridge was used above to connect the cabinetry, adding continuity as well as additional storage and a great place for the homeowners to display some glassware. The dishwasher features two drawers rather than the conventional door. And that's a nice convenient feature to have. You can put your dishes in from the top and no longer have to bend over. One other challenge was providing proper ventilation for the high BTU output of the range top. In order to do that, we had a challenge of the ceiling joists running in this direction and a cathedral ceiling in the dining room behind this wall. So the ventilation had to run across the joists. In order to do that, a chase was made inside the cabinet, allowing the ventilation to go directly to the exterior of the home. A great solution for an important function. And speaking of functions, I want to point out the continuous grid on the range top and how easy it is to slide a pot from one burner to the other. This countertop services both the dining room and the double oven. And the glass cabinetry above is great for entertaining because guests can see the stemware and serve themselves. Now, the oven is a double electric convection oven. Electric is important because it maintains a more constant and precise temperature. And what I mean by convection is, inside there's a fan that circulates the air around the food, cooking it more evenly, and reducing the cooking time by 20%. On each side of the 48-inch refrigerator is a pantry cabinet with convenient roll-out trays that'll keep you both organized and they're very convenient. The built-in refrigerator features two independent compressors, one for the freezer and one for the refrigerator. And they're located on top of the refrigerator for easy servicing should it be necessary. The angle on this cabinet helps funnel the holiday crowd into the dining room. I hope you've enjoyed today's tour and I look forward to seeing you again soon. But now that you've had a look, I've got to go cook here on a culinary tour and more. Welcome back to a culinary tour and more. Hey, we're gonna start out with our sweets. We're gonna make a cranberry pistachio biscotti. And I want you to know, I'm releasing a recipe that I worked on for many years that I have a lot of friends that have asked me over the years for this recipe and they haven't got it. It's only one friend that has it. But now it's out there in the open. Let me show you what I'm gonna start with. A cup of white sugar, I'm gonna put it into my blender. Half a cup of brown sugar, and that's compacted in there. So you're gonna to have to tap that out. A nice pinch of sea salt in there. 
And then some of our spices. We're gonna start out with cinnamon. I'm gonna put a whole tablespoon of cinnamon and two teaspoons of ground ginger. To top that off, some fresh grated nutmeg. Nutmeg is something you really want to grate fresh. And we're just going to put in maybe about a quarter or a quarter of a teaspoon should be plenty. And the aroma from this is just fantastic. I mean, it's just filling the air right now. Okay, so into that, I want to first mix in one stick of melted, unsalted butter. And I'm going to start that on low. I have a batter blade in there. So as that's going, I want to add in two eggs. That's mixed up rather nicely. I can add in my eggs now. You also want to add in one teaspoon of baking soda. And that's going to help the dough rise. Two teaspoons of vanilla. Give it another little bit of flavor. And now what I want to add in is start to bring in my flour and make this into a batter. So I'm going to need two and a half cups of all-purpose unbleached, please use unbleached flour and use a good quality flour. You're only going to get out of it what you put into it. So I'm going to add in here a cup of flour. I'm going to let that mix up a little bit. And we'll prepare the rest of our flour. Now that's blended up quite nicely. What I'm going to add in is a half cup of almond meal. And what this is, is just ground almonds. You can make it yourself, or you can find it in the baking section. OK, and I'm going to switch over to a dough hook. And I just want to make sure everything is scraped down in here. And now I'll add in one and a half cups of additional flour. Okay, so let me show you how our dough is starting to come together. It's still quite sticky, but what I'm going to do now is add in a cup of unsalted pistachio nuts. You can use whatever kind of nuts you want. Once you know the basics of this dough, you can experiment with it. You can put almonds, you can put pistachios, or no nuts at all. So there's a cup of pistachios, and these are great in biscotti. These are dried cranberries. So I'm taking an all-American ingredient here, cranberries, and putting them into an Italian biscotti. And that's my whole theory here, is global American cuisine. So let's get this mixed. OK, so that's mixed up quite well. And now we're going to take our dough out. You can see it's not one ball of dough like it would be for a pizza dough, for example. But we're going to knead this together. So I roll this out, and what I like to do to make sure everything's dispersed properly is I'll take this and fold it in half. And I'll just squeeze it together again and roll it. This way you get to know the texture of your dough so that each time you make it, you'll know you have the exact blend that you want. Okay, so now that I have this out, I'm going to take and divide this into, depending on the size of the biscotti you want. If you want little biscotti, you're going to divide this into four. If you want some big ones, you can divide it into two. I'm going to go for four because I'm going to have a lot of guests. So let's do this. So now we're just going to roll this out into a long piece, and there you go. I'm going to place that here, not too close to the side and not too close to the center because you want to leave room for this to expand. What I'm going to do is just press them down a little bit. Now, just want to glaze those with a little egg wash. So we're going to pop these into the oven for a little bit. 
Originally, I was going to make a different side with this, but Monday we entertained 29 guests here at this kitchen. And I made yucca. Yucca chips, actually, by slicing this very thin. And they were delicious. And I got so many compliments on them and so many people asking about what is that horrible looking thing that you have there that I thought I'd introduce it to you today. So yucca is a root from South America. Um, it's very, very hard, actually. So the first thing I want to do is just get the ends off of it. You can see it's very hard. So I'm going to take this and just start to peel it. And as hard as it is, it peels fine with just an average potato peeler, no problem. Now if you have a food processor with a slicing blade, you want a one millimeter blade. And that you can slice it enough, uh, thin enough for chips. So I'm going to use a mandolin. If you have one of these, you know you have to be very careful because it's as sharp as a razor. Um, and I'm going to take this, I just want to test and see how thick we are. Maybe a little thicker. There we go. If I cut this at an angle, it'll be much easier to make the chips. And you can see that's about one millimeter thick. Now when you get down to this size, you should be very, very careful. There is an attachment that comes with this. I'm not going to use it right now. I'm just going to stop. Okay, I think we have enough here for two servings. So I'm going to call it quits here, and in a minute, we're going to drop them in the deep fryer. Okay, so it's been about 25 minutes, and we're going to test the inside of the biscotti the old-fashioned way. Putting in a wood skewer, making sure it comes out clean, will tell us for sure that they're done inside. I'm going to go right into the center, and it came out clean. So guess what? We're ready to take these out. And we're going to let them cool. Okay, so while our biscotti are cooling down, we're going to start on the pork roast. Now I have here a bone-in pork roast. I'm going to cut my own pork chops off of it. And of course, you can buy these all done at the butcher or uh, wherever, you're buying, wherever you're buying your meat. This is really a beautiful, beautiful piece of meat. Very tender. And you can see that the butcher already cleaned up a little bit of the bone here. So I'm going to start by cutting a nice big pork chop off of this. And you want to cut right into the bone and straight down. And you can see how beautiful this is with a nice bone in there. I'm going to make two today. There you go. And don't be afraid to butcher your own meat. There's really nothing to it. You have a nice sharp knife, you'll be able to slide right through it. So I'm going to set this aside for now. And seasoning is very simple on this. I'm going to start with a little bit of olive oil to get the seasoning to stick. It'll also help us on our grill. Now, if you don't have a pair of these tongs at home, you should run out and get them. They're great for cooking. Uh, save you a lot of trips to the sink, actually, because you can just take it and flip your meat over without touching it. So again, a little bit of olive oil. And we're going to start with some kosher salt. I'm going to sprinkle that on. And the reason that chefs like to use kosher salt, by the way, is that it's the shape of the actual grain of salt makes it stick to the food better. And it's also, because of the size of it, it's very visible. It's also a very good tasting salt. Now, on top of this, I'm going to put some garlic and rosemary. Now, about the garlic, I've always been a fanatic for fresh California garlic. But what I'm going to use here is granulated California garlic. And the reason for this is I'm going to brown this on a grill uh, on very high heat. And when you use fresh garlic, it tends to burn a little bit and get bitter. Uh, so I like to use this uh, dried. 
The same thing with my rosemary. Now, the nice thing with the rosemary being dried is that when it hits the grill, it smokes and infuses the meat. Fantastic. You'll, you'll be able to smell it once it hits the grill. So I have that on there, and of course, pepper. One of our oldest spices. The history of pepper is unbelievable. Uh, Ramesses II, buried in 1224 BC with a peppercorn in each nostril. I'm sure we could think of worse places for a peppercorn to be, but why in his nostrils, I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna just pat that down a little bit. And we wanna flip these over and season the other side. I'm gonna set that over here and wait for the grill to get hot. Our biscotti's cooled off for about 15 minutes now. They're still warm, but I'm gonna slice them and get them in the oven to toast them. I'm gonna use a serrated knife for sure. And what I wanna do is cut them at about a 30 or 45 degree angle. And by the way, you don't have to toast these. You can eat them just like this. They're fine. In fact, they're delicious. Mmm. So the oven's been lowered to 350. I'm gonna put them in here for five minutes. We've been five minutes, I wanna roll these biscotti over so that we can toast the other side. If I can smell that nutmeg coming out of the cookies, like incense. Now they get very soft when they're back in the oven. So if you roll them up like this, all you have to do is take your thumbs and roll them down, they're standing up, and then flip them over. So they're all rolled over, five minutes back in the oven. So our second toasting on the biscotti is done. We're gonna take them out. And I'm gonna set them on a cooling rack to cool off. While our dessert's cooling down, I'm gonna start the meat on the grill. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can start the meat. We're gonna finish it under the broiler with some gorgonzola cheese, but I happen to have a char grill on my range. If you don't, if you have one of these pans, heavy cast iron skillet with the ribs in here, will work fine. So I'm gonna start by testing my grill to make sure that it's hot enough. And to do that, I just wanna take the side of the meat with the fat and press it on there. Nice sizzle, it's ready to go. So while that is uh, pre-cooking, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna prepare some bok choy. Now, you may not know what this is, but I'm sure you've had it in any stir fry that you may have had at a Chinese restaurant. And to do this, it's very simple to prepare. I just wanna take the bottom off just a little bit and give it a slice up the middle. And I'm just gonna drop these into some boiling water with a little bit of butter. Put a little salt on them and it's ready to go. It's a very simple uh, but different vegetable for you to prepare at home. I have some water over here boiling. I'm gonna put in a slab of butter. Well, it's been about four minutes on that side. So what I wanna do right now, actually, I just wanna rotate these 45 degrees. You see we have some beautiful char marks and you can see that we have uh, some nice searing going on. Now I'm gonna just rotate that. We're gonna flip these over and get the other side done. You can see here, I've got some beautiful grill marks, and you can see the sizzling on the meat. That spells flavor. Okay, so our chops have been pre-cooked. They're nice and brown on both sides. So I'm gonna take them off and give them a little bit of a rest before we put on our topping and put them under the broiler. And to do that, I'm just gonna tent them with a little bit of aluminum foil. I'm gonna let them rest for about five minutes, put the topping on them, and under the broiler. Well, our pork chops have had enough time to rest. Now I'm gonna cover them with gorgonzola cheese. And there's only one way to do this, and that's with your fingers. So let's get that on there. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna pop these under the broiler for a few minutes. Broiler set on medium. 
and I have the rack down uh, two notches down, so they're not too close to the broiler because you want that cheese to melt a little before it browns. I'm gonna make the yuca chips now. If you have a deep fryer, that's great, 350 degrees. If you don't, you can use a small pot like this with canola oil, but use a deep fry thermometer so that you have 350 degrees. Now, these only take three minutes and they're absolutely delicious. I'm gonna drop my basket down in there and I'm gonna just separate these a little bit so that we don't end up with them all stuck together. Now you may have tried to make potato chips at home before and decided it was too much of a bother. I can assure you that this is not. It's a very, very simple thing to do and they're absolutely delicious. So while those are cooking, I'm gonna put my bok choy into the pot and give that a couple of minutes. So we're three minutes into frying the yuca chips. You gotta see how beautiful and golden brown these are. Really looking nice. And they're crispy as can be. I'm gonna drop them out on some paper towels. And so I'm gonna sprinkle them with some kosher salt. You gotta do this right when they come out of the fryer. So the salt sticks. Our pork ready to come out. That gorgonzola is just starting to get a little golden. A perfect color. Our bok choy is almost tender enough and we can check that, of course, with a fork. If you go into the thickest part and try to pick it up, if your fork slides out, you know it's tender enough. So we're gonna take that off. I can get that out with a slotted spoon. And I put a nice handful of chips there. And a nice tender piece of baby bok choy. Look at the nice colors. Bright, bright green, a nice golden yellow, and a beautifully finished pork chop. Well, thank you for joining us on our premiere episode of A Culinary Tour and More. I'm John Messina, and I look forward to seeing you again soon, right here at our Culinary Center, or on a tour of one of America's most beautiful kitchens. And remember, this is the only program where before we cook, we have a look at some of America's most beautiful kitchens. <laughs>